Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's Church. My name is Alec, I'm one of the ministers here, and it's a joy to welcome you to our all-age service this morning. Uh, welcome if you're joining at home as well. And if you're here in the building, feel free to make lots of noise, uh, to enjoy yourself as we gather together to worship. I'm going to begin with uh, some words from John's Gospel that help us think about what, what with our whole the theme of our service today. And in John's Gospel, uh, Peter says this to Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' followers, says this. When Jesus says, don't you want to leave us? Don't you want to leave me? Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You only have the words of eternal life. And that's what we're going to be thinking about in our service today, is listening to Jesus as the one who has words of life for us. So I'm going to pray as we begin our service together. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray as we gather together this morning that you would help us to listen to your words of life. So Jesus' words of life help all that we do today point us towards him and to listening to him. And we pray this so that our lives might be changed by his words. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're at a table or if you're a youngish person, you might have a few things in front of you. There might be a bag with some goodies in that can help you join in with our service at some points. There's some shakers, there's some uh, streamers, books for, for writing or drawing. Uh, we also have a clipboard for slightly older ones as well. Um, and on there, there is our famous uh, word bingo. Okay, so if you're following along a clipboard, you can look out for the words that might be said during the service and shout bingo when you've listened to them all. And this morning is all about listening to God's words. Now, um, normally at this point, I would be able to hand over to Malcolm, but uh, sadly Malcolm's not here today um, to, to, to help us. He can't be in today. So, so I, I've asked Claude to, to help me a bit, but... Um, uh, I've not seen Claude yet, and I don't know if he's around yet. Claude, are you there, Claude? No. Claude, are you? Oh, Claude, what? Claude, are you, are you ready? What's the Claude? Do, 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 do. Oh no, I want him back. Claude, what? Oh, what are these, Claude, coming down? Alec. Sure. I'm trying to get ready for the service. I have so much to do. Malcolm is not here today, and I am busy. I'm trying to get ready for you. Have this. <laughs> that, that's, that's really helpful, Claude. I, I, I appreciate you getting ready, and the microphone's really helpful, but, but the service has actually already started. No! Oh, oh no. But yeah. I'm so busy, Alec. I, I need to get it all ready, and it's not clean, and the pulpit's not ready, and I, uh, Malcolm's not here. Don't worry, I know, my, I know Malcolm's not here, and it, makes, it can be a bit sad that Malcolm's not here today, but you'll be fine, Claude. You'll be really good, I'm sure. Okay. Now, we just have to remember that in all our busyness, the service has actually started. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, don't worry, don't worry, I'm sure it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Um, now, Claude, what I, I, there's one thing, I, I appreciate your cleaning, that's fantastic, but I did need you to, to get me a couple of props. Do you remember me saying a, a few things that would help us with our first song? I remember. Give me one moment, please. Not this, no? No, not, not, not that one. I'm not going to sing, don't worry. How about this? Uh, no, I'm not going to play the saxophone either. What about... Oh, that's one, yes, fantastic. A torch. That's great. So a torch is one of our first props for us. First song, it's a light. We're going to think about that in a moment. Claude, was there, was there one other one? Yes, let's just give me one moment, I'll find it. Yep. Aha. Perfect. You're very good at multitasking now with your mouth and hands at the same time. Fantastic. A hammer. Okay, so we have a light and a hammer. And these are here to help us with our first 
song together. So we've got a light and a hammer. And our first song this morning is all about God's word and listening to God's words and Jesus' words. And one of the words in the Bible, Claude, is it tells us that the Bible is like a light. God's words are like a light. Have you ever walked around in the dark, Lord? I have, but I'm a little bit scared of the dark, I'm afraid. Yeah, we can get a bit scared of the dark, can't we? But a light helps us in the dark to see where we're going, doesn't it? It does indeed. And God's word helps us to see where we're going, so that's fantastic. Now, a hammer. Have you ever had to do any work with that hammer, Lord? Yes, I do DIY all the time with all of my hands and feet and <laughs> things. Fantastic. So a hammer, God's word is also described as a hammer. Now a hammer, you might think, what? how is God's word like a hammer? But it's a hammer in a way that hammers can be used to shape things if you have a hammer and a chisel. Or to break things that are hard and need to be softened. And the Bible is like a hammer. God's word is like a hammer because it can shape us and it can change us. It can break us where we're hard-hearted and help us to be soft-hearted and open to God. So our first song, Claude, this morning is called It's a Light and a Hammer. Now, there are some actions. Now, I'm not I know you actions. love doing I actions, I love Alec. actions, just like Malcolm loves actions. So, there's actions for the chorus. So I'm going to try and remember to teach everyone. So the actions are this, and I do expect if I'm doing this, embarrassing myself, that the rest of us can join in as well. So the course goes like this. It's a light. Everyone show me a light. It's a spotlight. It's a light and a hammer. It's a fire. I'm going to struggle with that one, Alec. Yeah, you can just wriggle your fingers, don't worry. It's a fire and a sword, like this. It's the voice of the Father, the word of the Lord. It's the blade of the Spirit. These are all Bible pictures for the God's word that can cut to the soul. And God can use it to make us whole. Great. We'll get that. I think that's fantastic. Becca's going to help as well. So you have two people to follow with well you. Well done, Becca. Not that I'm going to be, you know, struggling with them. So I'll invite our musicians to stand up. And we'll join in together. Don't worry, I won't sing.
Our next song might be slightly more familiar with, with us because we've sung it at quite a few of all ages. Claude knows this one, don't you, Claude? It's the one about the king. Yes. 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 You're going to give it a go, aren't you? Because it requires two hands and that might be a bit difficult. I can do two hands. Two hands. Uh, I can do one of the first bit. It says, Our oh God, the King of the Giants. That's the one. Give that one. Okay. Oh, no. That's the fella. Okay, so it says, My God, can you all join in? Because I think you all know it. These ones over here definitely know it. So it says, My God, the King of the Giants. My God, the King of the Lions. My God, the King of the Creatures of the Deep. And my God, the King of the me. And in the middle, there's a bit of something else that goes on. And thank you, Maracas, because we all love to shake the Maracas, especially in our mission. <laughs> So I've been cleaning and I've been getting ready. I've been helping Becca and helping Cad and helping you a little. And yes, it's just been very, very, very busy. You have done really well, Claude. Thank you. Were you quite worried about wanting to do a really good job? For I've you? had sleepless nights. I've had dreams that I turn up without any clothes on. It's just been very, very, very stressful. I'm sure it's been stressful. Well, don't worry. It's okay, Claude. You've, you've done a great job. You've, you know, you've got the props ready. It's fantastic. The thing is, 
I wouldn't want you to be so busy that you missed the really important thing. What's that? You know, the, the really, really important part. Seeing you? Well, not seeing me, no, no. The, you know, the important part. Seeing all these lovely folks down well, here? Well, these lovely folks are important as well. In fact, the Getting whole, chocolate? Yeah, our chocolate. Seeing John Hughes? Yes, I mean, it's great that John's here too. But all those things are really important, and they're, they're part of the really important thing. I wouldn't want you so busy that you missed the service. And so busy that you missed listening to God and God's word. Sometimes it's really hard because I am really busy and I, I forget what I'm meant to be doing. And then you're right, I, I, I miss the real thing. Yeah, so we can be really busy, can't we? That we forget what is really important to us. But do you know what's really fantastic? What? We are going to have a Bible reading now. And it's going to help us to think about what is really, really important. Is it, is it who I think it is? It is who you think it is. Would you like to introduce her? I, I, I can try, Alec, but I think I might get it wrong. So she's the wild woman of the West? No, 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 the wild woman of Wales. The wild woman of Wales. Let's give her a round of applause as she comes Ooh. up. Thank you, Paul. Good morning to you all. Oh, and it's so lush to be here and to see you all. And good morning to you all at home too, Barada. Hopefully that we'll see you back soon. Well, let's see what's occurring in the Bible reading today. It's from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. At the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. For fair play, she had a lot to do with Jesus coming. I know I would have been busy too. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Do you know, I have to confess I'm a Martha. I really, really need to listen to what Peck has to say now. I really do. This is the word of the Lord. Martha 
Jane's busy just like you, Claude, getting everything ready. She's getting the nibbles out. She's got about five courses cooking in the kitchen. She's laid the table just right. You know what it's like when you've got a party? Well, can we even remember what it's like to have a party? I'm not sure, but... Somewhere in the dim and distant past, we used to have parties and friends around, and we'd get our house all nice and ready. And Martha, hurrying around, doing that. She knew that Jesus was a special guest, and she wanted everything to be just right for him. Her sister Mary recognises that Jesus is a special guest as well. And she sits at his feet, listening to what he's saying, hanging every word. But Martha is going about her memory. As she does, she gets more and more upset and frustrated with her sister. You can imagine the thoughts in her head, can't you? Or maybe the words coming out of her mouth. Oh, would you like some nibbles? Oh, would love to chat, but I've got seven pans on the go in the kitchen. No, no, you just sit there I can manage the five different courses that I'm getting ready by myself, on my own. It's fine. And then she goes back to the kitchen and she grumbles to herself, doesn't she? And she's thinking, I've got this to do and that to sort. I haven't even started on this yet. And has Mary even once come out to help? Is it too much to ask for her to contribute? Why is it always me that has to do everything? for everyone. She gets herself in a right tiz, doesn't she? She gets more and more distracted. She goes to Jesus and she says, don't you care? Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Now, I don't know about you, but I would expect Jesus to side with Martha here. Martha's been doing all these good things for her guests. Mary's just been sitting around to Jesus. Of course, she should get up and help her sister. But that's not what Jesus says. Instead, he says, very calm, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it won't be taken away from her. Now, Mary has chosen what is better. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Some translations say she has chosen the better portion. What does that even mean? So it got me thinking about, well, Claude, can you help me? Yes, always willing. Oh, really. Have you ever looked around during family meal time or when you're having a meal with friends and seen how different people eat what's on their plate? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so, if you've ever done that, you have noticed. Actually, no, I haven't. No? Do you know why? Why? Because that's weird. I didn't want to say, I was trying to be supportive, but I, I haven't looked around at people's food when they're eating because that's a pretty strange thing to do. Okay, I've 100% definitely never done that, like Claude. Okay, good. Okay. Um, but anyway, if you did, um, you might notice that some people, like my mum, save the best bit to last because she wants to really enjoy and savour it once she's eaten the rest of her meal. Anyone in your house do that, God? No. And I'll tell you why. Have you ever eaten Malcolm Kidd's food? Uh, Nobody saves any best bit to last, because if you're not careful, he'll come along, sniff out what's on your plate, and just on his plate. <gasps> yep. Malcolm Kidd. So ah, that's one thing to know if you come round to dinner at our house. You have to eat it quick. Okay. Well, I'm a bit like that, and my dad's a bit like that as well, and he eats a bit of everything all at once because he wants to taste all the flavours. But, well, Claude, how do you eat your dinner? With difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, I, okay, okay, I'll tell you. I make little picnic out of all the food on a fork at once. Let me explain. I know that's weird. Hold on. 
I'm a little tired. Let me wake up. So I get a little bit of one bit from over one side of the plate, and then I get the next bit because I want to enjoy all of it in my mouth at once. Does that make sense? Yes. But it wasn't what I was hoping you were going to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> what were you right? hoping I was going to say? Other people. Oh, wait, I know, I know, I know. I you say can't the best out bit for. to last. Is that no, what you, you don't. No, I, I don't do that at all. Wait, so this analogy's not worked, has it? Lord, what are you on about, Ray? I've seen you eating. You, Sometimes. You tell me. I'll tell you. <laughs> Claude, when he's eating, eats the best bit first. Because it's the most exciting bit, it's the most important bit, and he wants to snaffle it all first. That's true. That's true. But little people tend to do that. They tend to see the plate and they go, oh, that's my favourite bit, whether it's the carrots or the meat or the potatoes, whichever bit they really, really like. It's always the bit that goes first off the plate, and then they kind of fight their way through the rest of the plate. Well, generally, most of it. That's what Jesus is saying to Martha. He's telling her that Mary has chosen the best thing, and he's put, she has put that first, just like that with the dinner. But Mary, you're right, Claude, I know you're thinking it, I know you're thinking it, but Mary wasn't eating her dinner. She was listening to Jesus. Jesus is saying that that's the best thing. Now, listening to Jesus isn't a great thing. Wait, don't worry, no heresies here, Alec, it's fine. Listening to Jesus isn't a great thing. It's the great thing. See, we can make that mistake, can't we? And Claude made that mistake earlier when he was getting ready for the service. He was so busy getting ready for the service. They didn't realise that he needed to focus on the service. We can forget that what the best thing is. Maybe we don't realise why it's important. So I thought we could have a think about why we should listen to Jesus. And I've got three reasons because it'd be wrong if we didn't, isn't it? So firstly, we should listen to Jesus because of who he is. We've been learning over the last few months in the All Age Service that Jesus is the Son of God. He's the perfect king, and he's our rescuer. At the transfiguration in Luke 9, you can look at it later, Peter, James, and John see an amazing thing happen. They see Jesus in a whole new light. And in verse 35, they hear God say, This is my son, who I have chosen. Listen to him. Jesus isn't just an bloke. He doesn't just have some good advice, chat a good chat. He is God. He's the creator. He's the one in charge of all things. And that makes his words worth listening to. Now, I don't know you, some grown-ups in the room, you might have put together some flat pack furniture. We like Ikea here, but other suppliers are available, just, you know, no bias. They're a bit complicated to put together, though, if you're trying to do but if you want to know how best to do it, how to make it turn out right with no missing bits or wonky bits or wobbly bits, then the best thing to do is follow the instructions. It makes sense, doesn't it, to look to the designer for guidance. In the same way, we should listen to God who did everything for guidance, understanding him, understanding ourselves and how best to live his way. Now, secondly, we should listen to Jesus because we're his friends and we're part of God's family. In John 15, Jesus says, you are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. And in Luke 8, 21, Jesus says, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. Being part of Jesus' team involves listening to God's word and doing what he says. The way we behave, the things we do, the words we say are influenced by the people around us, aren't they? Sometimes that's our friends, sometimes it's our family. If we spend time with really optimistic people, we'll start seeing the best in everything. If we spend time with people who've got really good in something, we can learn from them. If we spend time with people with funny accents, we might start talking like them 
or using the words that they use, like we for little. I miss her. The more time I spend with Jesus listening to him, the more I become like him. In the way I behave, the things I do, and the words I say. Because I've been around him. He's influenced me, just like friends and family. And thirdly, we should listen to Jesus because we need his word to know how to serve properly. Just like you serving earlier, Lord. When we're part of Jesus' team, we've got a job to do. And that's serving others. Now, I am sure that when Martha was getting everything ready, she was planning to spend some time with Jesus. But that was only one good thing on her list of good things that she was doing that day. But remember, listening to Jesus isn't a good thing. It's the good thing. He shouldn't be part of our to-do list. In fact, before the to-do list is even made, we should be listening to him. Only that one thing is needed. Martha and Claude were doing lots of good things. Martha was serving Jesus. But because she hasn't chosen the best thing, she's at odds with herself. She's distracted and she's worried and she's getting upset and frustrated. She's at odds with Jesus questioning whether he cares about her. And she's at odds with her sister getting all cranky. Tell her she should help me. Martha has some great gifts to use. But she can only serve well if she's spending time doing the one great thing. Listening to Jesus. Now I've talked a lot about listening to Jesus, but maybe Claude, you could help me to do some actions for how we listen to Jesus. All right, do you think you can do that, Lord? Yes, and, and Becca, can I just say one little thing? Of course. I was so busy before trying to clean the pulpit and get ready for Alec that I, I didn't look quite very carefully at the sheets of paper you gave me for That's the right. right examples, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry for that. That's all right, Claude. But you're doing a great job. Thanks, friend. Well done. Thank you. Now, it's your turn to do a great job because I... Well, I can do actions and talk at the same time, we know that, but it all gets in a big muddle like it did with the songs earlier. So, we're going to learn that listening to Jesus requires focus, and we're going to put our hand above our eyes as if we're looking for something. So, listening to Jesus requires focus. Martha was really distracted with their preparations. Claude was really distracted with his preparations earlier. We live in a world that is full of... Of distractions. In the letter to the Hebrews, the writer talks about the Christian life as running the race marked out before us. Now, we learned about, about this in Champions Holiday Bible Club last summer, if you caught it. If you didn't, it's all online. But one thing is for certain is I am not an athlete. Not at all. Sport, not my forte. But I've had friends over the years who have been really good at all kinds of different sports. And the one thing that they've got in common, no matter what sport they do, is that they are focused on their training and they do it regularly. The writer of Hebrews goes on to say, so we're running the race marked out before us and it says fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Mary was doing just that, wasn't she? She was focused on one thing and one thing only. The great thing. And we need to make sure that we find the time, we make the time and the space so that we can do just that. Now secondly, Claude, are you ready? Okay, listening to Jesus. Oh, he's got it already, look at this. Listening to Jesus doesn't require kissing our muscles, but it does require actions. See, Mary was sat at Jesus' feet. And that doesn't sound like an action, doesn't it? But Mary chose to do it. In those days, to sit at someone's feet was to be their student. Mary was doing something that usually only boys did. It wasn't that girls weren't allowed to learn from scriptures, but you were unlikely to find a teacher who was willing to teach them. Yet here Mary is, listening and learning, focusing and putting together in her mind all that Jesus is saying, so that she can share what she's learned with others. 
Mary's listening and learning so that she can do what Jesus says. We learned a lot about that in the parable series that we've just done with CYP at home. You can look at it online here, the chats with Kat. They're really great. But Jesus was teaching his listeners that being on his team didn't just mean listening to his word in one ear and letting it fall out the other side of your head out of the other ear. It meant listening to his words and doing it. So, and finally, listening to Jesus requires this book. Can you, oh yeah, sorry Claude, I forgot you didn't have two hands. This book. This book. All God wants us to know is right here. All of Jesus' teachings are in these pages. This book helps us to have the right view of God, the right view of ourselves, and how we live God's way in God's world. If we're going to listen and learn, then we need one of these. Not just as decoration on a shelf or on our bedside table, or something to stand a lot on to make it a bit taller, but as something we use regularly for its right purpose. And there's loads of ways you can read this book, the Bible. And there's lots of translations to make it easier to understand. I've got one here that's aimed at little ones. This one is the message. Nikki loves the message. It's not a translation. It's an interpretation. It helps us to understand different bits. The church Bible is the NIV. And on my phone, there are more translations than I can even care to think about. So find one that you understand and give it a go. Maybe find some Bible reading notes or a study guide, a plan to keep you going, some friends or family to read along with you, to ask you what you learned from the passage or what you thought of it, to encourage you to keep going. There's so many ways that we can read the Bible, but one thing is absolutely for certain. We can't listen to Jesus without it. So let's recap what we learned from Mary and Martha. We learned that spending time with Jesus and listening to him isn't a great thing, but it's the great thing. Because he's God, because his friends and family, and because we need it to serve properly. And Claude, Claude, are you ready? Yep. Can you help me uh, and remember how we listen to Jesus? We look. It yes. requires our focus. Yes. Then the second one was muscles. Yes. Actions. Requires us to do something better. It does. And the third one oh, is right. it requires the book. The Which Bible. Bible? The Bible. And we need to read it and, and spend time with the Lord and, and things. Absolutely. Good. Good remembering, Claude. Thank you. Two thumbs up for you. I struggle with you. you. It's all right. I'll give, the, I'll give the two thumbs up to you. Great job. Thank you, Claude. Thanks, Becca. It's okay. And great work if you remembered it too. How good is it that God loves us so much that he wants us to listen to him and learn from his word? I'm going to pray for us. And if you agree, then you can say amen at the end. Father God, thank you that you are amazing. Thank you that we can be on Jesus' team. And that makes us part of your family. Thank you that you want to help us to become more like you. Thank you that we can hear from you, from your word, the Bible, and that by listening to you, we can become more like you. Please help us to focus our attention on you and on reading your word. And please help us to do the things it teaches so that we can grow to be more like you. Amen. Amen. Great, thank you, Becca. We're going to do a game now that helps us with our listening. We've been thinking about listening to Jesus, so we're going to do a game that helps us with our listening. Now, I will need you to all listen with your ears to a sound that you're going to hear and try and guess what that sound is. And then we'll pause it 
see what if you can guess it and then we'll put up on the screen what it actually is so either can we have the first sound please everyone everyone ready listening Oh, does anyone know? Yes, what do you think? Filling up a car? Not filling up a car with petrol? Any other ideas what it might be? Claude, do you have an idea? Sounded like someone was telling me to shh. It did sound like something shush, but it wasn't. It was something else. Any other thoughts? Oh, Becca's motioning. It was someone. Oh. A hairspray, yeah, an aerosol spray. Brilliant, fantastic. Let's listen to it again. Yeah, well done. Well done, then. How are you? Okay, next one. Yeah, what is it? A, yeah, car starting. Let's see again. Well done. Yes, a car driving. Fantastic. Okay, one more. And let's have another. Mark Mitchell's asleep. Wake <laughs> him up. Wake him Wake up. up. What do you think it is? Someone snoring. Yeah, oh, someone it's not snoring. Mark. It's okay. It wasn't someone falling asleep, Lord. It's just on the sound. Okay, let's see the next. Keep listening. Sellotape? How oh, did you know that? Let's see if it is. Yes. Someone pulling sellotape. Fantastic. Okay, get ready for the next one. Lots of hands going. That's good. A roller coaster, do you think? Let's see. Clipping nails. Ooh. Let's see. Yes, clipping nails. That was the tricky one. Well done, one. Lizzie. Okay, we've got a few more. Let's keep listening. Got some. Oh, that was a very quick one there, yeah, Charlie. Opening a can. It's like music to my ears. That's right. Yes. A can of Coke. Yes, they're opening a can. Brilliant. Next one. Claude, do you know what it is? It's me knocking on the pulpit. Oh, it wasn't you knocking. On. Oh, chopping an onion. There you go. <laughs> chopping an onion. Okay. Uh, we've got two more, I think. Seaside, I think so. Let's have a look. Yeah, the seaside. You're very good at listening. Okay, one more. Now, this one might be a bit more difficult, so go listen carefully. I hope we've all heard this noise this morning already. Yeah. Olivia, do you know what it is? Brushing your teeth? I think so. Let's see. Well wow, done, fantastic. You guys are really good at listening. I'm really impressed. Fantastic listening. Now, what we're going to do now is that we've listened to Jesus. We've listened to his word, which is fantastic. And do you know what? It's also amazing. We can also talk to God knowing that he listens to us. So I'm going to invite Josh up and he's going to pray for us as we talk to God and he listens to us, which is amazing. We're going to use a pretty familiar format now, which is the, the teaspoon prayer, which I'm sure everyone 
knows, but I'll run over it anyway. Um, so this is a great way to break because it's so easy to remember. So you've got the T for thank you, the S for sorry, and the P for please. So um, I've got a little bit to say, but then I'll leave a bit of a gap so that you can have your own conversation with God as well. So. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us. Thank you that we can talk to you in prayer wherever we are and that you love to hear us pray. Thank you that you are always ready to listen. And thank you that you've given us this book that we can learn from and learn how to pray to you. Sorry for when we don't listen to you, for ourselves first. And sorry for when we make our own choices or worry about something instead of talking to you and asking for your help and guidance. Please help us to talk to you every day in prayer, and please teach us how to pray to you, and help us to remember that talking to you in prayer is not just a good thing, it's the good thing. Amen. We're now going to join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, you are talking to us Stand up to join in and or stay seated and please do have a go at the actions.
so much to our musicians and our tech team and everyone else who's made this service happen. Uh, I'm going to thank God now as we close our service as well. So let's pray together before we finish. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can gather together and we can listen to your words, to the words of Jesus, and to the words of the Bible. And we pray that you would do your work in our hearts and our lives to change us with your word and through your spirit. And we pray that as we go from here today, you would be with us wherever we go and whoever we are speaking to. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And have a great uh, afternoon and the rest of your day. Thank you for coming.